Hello and welcome to episode 189 of the 61 Indicast. My name is Mike Townjo. Tonight I am joined by Matthew Wright. Hello. And Kyle Stevenson. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I need you all to consider your yourselves lucky. Uh you almost got a text from Mike saying, like, hey y'all, you gotta do tonight without me. Cause I just found out Queens of the Stone Age uh hit the stage five mm. minutes down the road. I was about to hit <laughs> Oh I just, shit. I was about to just jump on like twenty dollar tickets. You, you should have just done it live from there. We can't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's a DMCA nightmare on YouTube side of things. Yeah, Kelsey true. tattooed two individuals who uh flew in from Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh they were like they came in for the Queens of the Stone Age show that got rescheduled from last summer for whatever mm. reason. And then Kelsey like came in. It was like a half hour ago. She's like, oh, yeah, they're going to the Queens, Queens of the Stone Age show tonight. I was like, damn. And then immediately <laughs> just started looking at tickets. Not even thinking about like us having plans tonight to do like, yeah. production stuff. So, yeah. Curio- uh, cool, curiously, how, how much were tickets for a show that's in five minutes? On StubHub, I could get like seats, like because it's one of the amphitheaters that like mm-hmm. there's the lawn and then mm-hmm. seats. Seats were thirty bucks. Whoa! Wow. So I don't <laughs> doing that. Like people who wait till the last second freak me out. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I am, could never. <laughs> it's a strat, man. I know it's a smart strat, but <laughs> I like because everything near me that I want to see is in the city, so I can't like just take a. Yeah two hour train to the city sure. without tickets and then be outside MSG and be like, okay, <laughs> let's hope something is, is going to be in my price range. Well, speaking of the Island, I mean, for the last time me and Kelsey saw my coming romance during the reunion tour, um, it was at that UBS. Yep. Ubi. Why did I say Ubi? <laughs> I don't know, but I was going to go with it. <laughs> Ubisoft. <laughs> UBS, the UBS theater that is in Long Island, uh, granted, like more bordering the city, yep. but um, waited till the morning of. And usually the, the like those my chem tickets are like no less than 150 bucks, no matter what. Yeah. Got it for 20 bucks each. Mm. I'm planning on doing the same with Blink-182 when they come back around in July. I ain't I ain't messing around. Also, Matt, for context, we just learned to disregard when Kyle disappears for a second. Because in post production, when people are watching this or oh, yeah, listening yeah. to yeah. this, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. So yeah. Canada notices it. Our uh, patrons, it. The, the members of the coop, will notice it when they watch the archive. But the thing, the thing is, is I don't blip out for them. Right. It's only for you. So yeah. I'm so, the one that stays constant. But That's do we good. disappear? You disappear on the YouTube end. Okay. Oh. I stay there completely, but then when I <laughs> am editing the video version of it, there is no disappearing. Yeah, no, it's fine. So I don't understand what's going that's on. Good. That, that's good. Though. It's definitely training us to be better hosts, <laughs> to yeah, not let the little, little things distract us. Sure. Granted, we just went on a tangent for a little thing distracting us, but that's why you listen to the Six One IndieCast, a weekly video game podcast amplifying the indie scene and smaller games outside of the AAA space. New episodes drop each and every Monday morning on all major podcast feeds and youtube.com slash Six One Indie. Supporters on patreon.com slash Six One Indie can tune in live as we record and gain access to clocked out the IndieCast post show. But if money is tight, no worries. You still can show your support with a simple click. Wherever you're listening, go ahead and leave this podcast a review. Follow Six One Indie on socials. Subscribe and hit the bell on YouTube and tell your friends all all about us shout out to members of the coop a little rebranding on, on patreon members of the coop brett griffin colby cordis ellie jc jill grote marcus johnson no god is nicholas johnson and marcus o'neill nicholas johnson marcus o'neill i need to separate them they're like b- misbehaving in class I need to separate them <laughs> i'm doing it right now marcus no nicholas you're going towards the bottom of the list Nicole Humphrey, Stone Cold (laughs) E.T., Nicholas Johnson once again, The Compound, Cole, a.k.a. The Good Sir, and of course, our producer, Silcanet, who is currently in chat, watching us fall apart in real time. I can't wait until next week you say (laughs) Nicholas Compound or Marcus Humphrey (laughs) and just mess it up again, different people. (laughs) Oh, goodness gracious. Housekeeping for you. Guess what? The Six-Way Indie Showcase, we announced that it is happening on September 19th. If you would like to get some behind the scenes looks and information on the whole showcase production, head on over to patreon.com slash six one indie. You could become a producer. We're going to have some uh, content trickling out over the course of the next four months. Is that the number? Yeah, four, four months. That's the number between May and uh, 
September. Uh, yeah. Speaking of that, Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash 61 Indie also got a brief kind of refresh. There are three tiers now, the IndieCast Plus tier, where you could just get this show early. And uh, of course, with Clocked Out, the IndieCast Post Show, the Coop membership, which gives you access to watch the shows live. And also, anytime we record a Let's Play, a 61 Plays, come out and hang out with us while we record them live. Of course, when... There's no embargo in place. Uh, and then, of course, the producer tier where you get those behind the scenes on the major productions. Uh, a lot of reviews in the pipeline, but the ones that we could talk about right now, Becca reviewed Indica. I think she liked it. I It's a weird yeah. review. I think overall yeah. positive. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you got a surmount review on the website, Yeah, which is out today. Go play it. It is out today. And then I reviewed Another Crab's Treasure, my current game of the year. Mm. But yeah, obviously May 9th looms. So you could <laughs> make an educated guess as to what is happening behind the scenes. Gentlemen, tonight I want to Hold talk. On. Another little mm. housekeeping thing. Okay. Shout out to Indie Council. 10,000 downloads. Oh. Hey, Indie Council. Pat yourself on the back on this, on this show. The number two indie podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are we are the number two indie podcast here. We were here first, but you know it's fine. <laughs> we have 180 episodes. It's it's cool. It's all right, everybody. 189. I said 180 ish, did I not? Oh, I thought you just said 80. Never mind. No. But yeah, indie council. I hey, could've. thanks for the support. Thanks for the love. Appreciate yeah. y'all. Oh, I guess the other piece of housekeeping thing, which is going to be news to Matt. Uh, I'll be at SGF. <laughs> uh, six one indie. Got an invite to SGF. I should say I got an invite through six one indie. Um, so if you're in LA, come say hi. Awesome. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what part of it's weird? <laughs> I don't know. I just feel too chaotic and whatever to be granted That's an invitation to <laughs> <laughs> what? Chaos is your natural state, though. Yeah, but I feel like I don't belong <laughs> in in that uh, in the the high regard of Jeff Keeley and his his prestigious fucking okay. show. I should be careful with what I say. I'll get just you spill out. ice cream everywhere, <laughs> specifically ice cream. <laughs> but yeah, I'm planning on. Um, I'm gonna bring my laptop with me. I'm gonna plan on just knocking out some quick like review uh, previews. Sorry. Um, try to talk to some of the devs. I'm gonna bring some uh, production equipment with me. So stay tuned to the site. I'm gonna we'll try to get some stuff going. Um, speaking of indie council, we're planning on doing an in person podcast awesome. as well. Uh, not like something people could attend or anything. Just like right. us together in a room in person doing a podcast. So good times. Also, some other potential cool news that I not confirmed yet, but. Hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll be able to share something else. All right, Kyle, it's why I DM'd you this morning. Okay. Anyways, tonight I want to talk about, uh, and there's no great way to transition from us just messing around a little bit there. Um, I want to talk about Roll7 and Intercept Games. Uh, of course, uh, news broke this week that take two is reportedly shutting down the two studios um private divisions suffering from layoffs uh, i'm going to take this from gamesindustry.biz this is james bachelor reporting on the uh the bloomberg news the bloomberg report um Bloomberg has seen internal doc documentation that reveals that UK developer roll seven known for the ali ali series and roller drome is planned for closure with the publisher working on the severance agreements for the affected staff. The documents also plans to close Intercept Games, the Seattle-based studio behind Kerbal Space Program. Uh, yesterday, Games Biz reported on a warrant notice filed in Washington State revealing that a Take-Two-owned Seattle office will close this June and affecting 70 employees. Bloomberg noted that this is approximately the same number of staff who worked at Intercept games uh both studios are a part of private division take two's label for publishing indie games the label formed intercept games in 2020 after taking over development of kerbal space program 2 and acquired role 7 in 2021 uh of course you go over to gamesindustry.biz to check out that full article i guess you can also head over over to uh bloomberg if you have a subscription to bloomberg to check out jason schreier's report um horrific stuff i hate that we keep on talking about this um, on the latest Indie Council, uh, this is a big topic of discussion. Of course, just letting our frustrations, obviously, with the situation. Um, instead of kind of treading that same water tonight, 
of course, I want to give you both the platform to say what say your thoughts or express your feelings about this news. But what I really want to do tonight is reflect on those games that we do love so much. But before we get to that, um, Matt, I know you have some stuff to say, so I give you the floor first. Yeah. Um, so I, I never actually played Kerbal Space Program 2, which um, I only just now realize it is a different developer than Kerbal Space Program 1. Um, uh, but still, like, other than those two games, there's no other like space simulator like that out there. It was um, like really like a physics playground. And um, speaking about the first game, like um, I bought that all the way back in 2013. And it's one of those games that kind of took over YouTube. Uh, a lot of YouTubers were doing that, but it was also one of those rare games where it's single player. But like, if you're playing it at the same time with other people and like kind of doing like your own space race kind of thing, it was, it was a blast. Um so to see kind of like uh, take two, you know, purchase an IP and then kind of, you know, decide, hey, that's that's all for you. And we own it now. It's it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going to the Kerbal Space Program two page, uh, the Steam page, uh, it is currently out in early access and even. Mm -hmm. As soon as of uh, what was it, April 25th, there was like a development update from the creative director, like talking about some stuff coming up and and um, just laying out the future plans for early access on the on the road to 1.0. Mm -hmm. uh, it is with this context, it's weird seeing that and like heartbreaking this like, unfortunately, it's not the first time we've seen a studio get laid off in the middle of an early access cycle or in the middle of a development cycle, obviously, but it's strange because as soon as you go to the Steam page, the most obvious thing at the moment, uh, recent reviews, mostly negative yeah. 535 reviews and all those nothing to do with the game. It's mm -hmm. all warning people don't buy this game. The entire studio was just laid off. Yeah. And um, I, I, I forget where I did see a note somewhere that um, take two said that development will continue on Kerbal Space Program too. But like at this yeah. point, like, you're not supporting the people who started that game. If you're buying it now, that's um something that got brought up on the council last night. Like, mm -hmm. is it really that much more financially sound to put a skeleton crew on a project right. versus just keeping them, keeping the team active through this development cycle? Like it's just backwards ass decisions and just yeah. real quick. Yep. Matt, I want to just point out something you said in our community discord, like, you know, we want, you know, you would love to see the, uh, the reasoning behind this decision and the, and yeah. the documents because GTA online is just printing money <laughs> and the, the takes you CEO. I think last year we looked it up. Uh, his salary was 70 mil or something. Mm -hmm. and it's like not including bonuses, stock options, et cetera, not, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Kyle, I, go. yeah, no, I was going to just add to that point directly of this is even weirder when you really sit down and think about, GTA six is next year. Yeah. That's going to print money. And the fact that you can't keep intercept and roll seven who, by the way, just won a BAFTA recently for roller yeah. drum, yep. uh, an award winning studio that makes nothing but bangers, in my opinion. And Agreed. you just are going to shut them down for what reason? It, it, Many it's, reasons. Yeah. yeah like, where where I, I we all know like it, you're not hurting for it and and, and it just i don't know there, there's Without been a lot of really weird decisions going uh, oh, 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 going around on this topic of layoffs or whatever and people who are losing their jobs on indies and triple a's and all in between it's it's mind-numbing at this point like, I know I keep saying that every time it happens, but it just. I wish there was a better answer to what we have to give, and there is none. Yeah. Without without doing the thing and doing the rant, it's, uh, it's macroeconomic late stage capitalism. That's what all this is. Yeah. And even just to obviously, I don't want to, you know, a lot of it is on the development side, but also we've seen it on the media side as well. And, and, community management side like all facets yep. of the industry have been just affected i was really hoping when um 
when we filmed the last showcase and we we had our closing bit and I had my little I said my peace of mind of like we got to protect our own and it's like support mm-hmm. one of another. I was really hoping that would be all out of date at this point. It's not. And it, nope. it blows real bad. Yep. Um, but yeah. But roll seven. I will. Yeah. I want to <clears> talk <throat> about the games because again, Kyle, like you said, both studios put out nothing but bangers. Um, I would like to start with Matt because personally, and I think I can speak for Kyle also, I don't have experience with Kerbal Space Program. I know I understand different studios, but still the IP. So it's still like Mm -hmm. Kerbal Space Program always felt like one of those IP that are one of those staple names in in indies and in games. So like still, despite it being a different studio, it feels shitty that it's that's just probably going to go away. Like um, I'd imagine like they're just going to ship 1.0 at some point just to tie up loose ends and call it a day. Yeah. yeah, so I, I would love to hear just like your thoughts on Kerbal Space Program and, and like your experience and history with the with the game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, bought it 2013. Uh, I used to play with a bunch of, uh, funnily enough, we were called Kotakuites. It was a group for people who write Kotaku on Steam. Uh, and we did this whole thing where I think like six, eight, ten of us bought the game and we were just doing a space race. <laughs> if you've ever played that game, your first like five, seven, ten builds of rockets are just going to be disasters. Um, because if you don't know, uh, Kerbal Space Program, you're able to do design your own rocket with the goal of whatever you want it to be, at least to begin with. There was like later modes that came out with that had missions and stuff like that, but originally it was just a sandbox where you had access to rockets, fuel, different um, sections of spaceship. So if you wanted to do science research, all that jazz it was your playground to play in and just (laughs) some of the most fun was just (laughs) making a disaster. (laughs) Um, Seeing your, your rocket explode spectacularly in the entire time. If you're not familiar in the lower right hand corner, you can see a Kerbal's face as they're uh, in the pilot seat of the spaceship and uh, the, the sheer terror on their face when that, that ship's on fire and then just gone. (laughs) But yeah, what I remember of the few times I watched, like, like you mentioned, it was huge on YouTube and watching YouTubers play it is that charming nature of it, of seeing the little Kerbal in the, in the lower mm-hmm. corner as they're experiencing terrible tragedies to their spaceship. It's <laughs> it's such a fun game. It's a it's a very complex mechanic game, like mechanically physics. It's, mm-hmm. and physics like you you got to know kind of what you're doing, but failing and not knowing is most of the fun from the outside looking in. And we need more of those games and yeah. that don't yeah, take themselves like seriously. And there's yeah. like a, there's fun in failing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, Kerbal Kerbal is definitely legendary for that, for sure. Yeah. Like even of- thinking about that, I feel like what there's like, there's things like getting over it that are sort of Mm -hmm. physics based, but like, that's more of a puzzler. Like that's not really a, a fuck around and find out kind of game. Like like herbal is. (laughs) Yeah. It's rare. Is that the, the sledgehammer one? Yeah. 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 That that's, that's more on the frustrating ends than like having fun when you fail uh, kind of thing on the similar vein. Like we have baby steps from Ben coming out too, which Mm -hmm. is going to be that same, or even someone like Octodad. Like there is like the hilarity in the physics, but like, Yes, that it, like frustration comes out of there where Kerbal very much encourages experimentation and oh, yeah. it, it encourages you to fail. Like it, whether it's the intention or not, there is something really beautiful and sincere about a game teaching you that it's okay to fail. Like make your mistakes. That's what this platform is for. And figuring um, and, it out you know, on your own. Figure it out on your mm-hmm. own. Like, am I reading too much into it? Who knows? Maybe like that is part of the design philosophy of that game. I would love to see those early design docs to see if like any of that conversation was in there, but yeah, it's, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I must be blanking on something, but I feel like there's not really anything that has that um, recognition, that impact, that overall community love that Kerbal has in, in the genre. There's, there's a, uh, what was it? Like bridge simulator sure like, like yeah, uh, yeah. On, on a like a uh, on a different scale 
Sure. That, yeah. that is like, yeah, you're going to fail a lot when building these things, but the addition of the Kerbal characters, I think, is what makes it stand out. Yeah, it, it has personality. Yes. Um, so Kenna did write it into the Discord, which, uh, hey, go to 6 join the Discord, and hang out with a bunch of wonderful folks. Um, so yeah, so Kenna wrote, uh, uh, haven't played Ali Ali. We'll get to that. So Kenna, you need to play Ali Ali. Uh, but Kerbal Space Program, I did. And letting go people and letting go people so good in writing. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Letting go people so good in writing the humor, the physics design is so short sighted. I don't even know what to say. I hope people can bounce back and get snatched by other studios. They deserve it. Yeah. Madam, again, as somebody who hasn't played it firsthand, but I recognize the charm, the humor, like that's also a big part of it. Um, I'd imagine Mm -hmm. even in the moment to moment gameplay. Like, yeah, it's, it's the only game that encapsulates what like early rocket building was mm. um, that it doesn't really show like even in, even in my room, but like I love like space rockets and all that stuff. And hell yeah, like a lot of that early, even till this day was failure. Like you don't know until you fucking try it. Like all of it's theoretical until you try. And sometimes it might work for no reason when it doesn't work another time. Like, it's volatile stuff, but sometimes it works and it's beautiful when it does like seeing um, your rocket get out of orbit. And so you're letting go of your, your uh, boosters and seeing it do like that spiraling dance in space because your rocket's not just going straight. Like it's still like spinning on an axis. It's beautiful. And there's nothing else like that out there. Yeah. How, what is the farthest you got in Kerbal? Like how far the into, moon. deep into space you got to the moon? <laughs> okay, I'm curious. Like how best. how far does it go? Like can you theoretically There's a solar go as system. far as you want? Yeah, sweet. That's awesome. That's wild. That's really really. Cool. When when did Kerbal like the first one launch? I feel like it's, uh, it's been early a while, access, right? 2011, 2012. Wow. Yeah, that too. It's like it's seriously like. There's a lot of times we talk about like the OGs in the indie space. Like of course your you know your Meat Boys and. and the other one we don't talk about anymore because the June twenty fourth, twenty eleven. Yep. Yeah, like you don't really. I guess like Kerbal never really comes up in the conversation, but like they really are one of the OGs along with like you know Meat Boy and, and Fez mm-hmm. and N Plus. It was just for all the nerds on PC. Yeah, and like <laughs> for, for a long time, it's the nerds need something, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to go back and mess around with it. I'm sure, it's like. Fun. Yeah, we we should maybe like do a stream or something with it. That would be that'd be Are a you fun down to do like, a space race. Yeah, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah, we'll we'll pencil that in. Yeah, I know. Odd, oh, I'm gonna get so frustrated so quickly. Oh, yeah. I haven't played My- it in years, so <laughs> I'll be. It's it's fun. There's fun in the frustration. Sure, sure, yes, sure. Because it's like oh, that's sure failing miserably <laughs> with a group. Also, I'm sure it's a blast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any final words on on Kerbal for now until something else pops up? Um, all I'll say is I hope the team, uh, lands on their feet. Um, I know Seattle, Portland area, like there's a good amount of, um, small indie studios and other work too, if they need it. Um, so I hope they're all doing okay. Yeah. Same best wishes, of course. Um, yeah, let's roll, let's roll on to roll seven. Um, not the strongest, think- but I'll take it. A, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> let's drop in. Oh, yeah. Still thinking about Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, <laughs> are you not having fun here, Mike? What are you talking about? No one he's knows. Still looking at tickets know? right now. <laughs> at any point, he's could just be gone. When they, when you guys blip out on my screen for everybody, mm-hmm. it's just gonna come back and no one's in Mike's seat anymore. Yeah. <laughs> he's just the seat's gone. just spinning. Exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about roll seven. Um, and of yeah. course, I think it's important to start from at least our entry point into roll seven. Um, I, does anybody know off the top of their minds was Ollie Ollie their first game? That's a good question that I totally should have researched. Like, obviously this. for me, that was the first one. What happened? I can't hear either of you anymore. What happened? Oh no. Can you hear me? I now? hear Matt. I can't hear Mike. Mike, did you mute? It's because I accidentally muted myself. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't 
do that to me. <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, so no, the no, look no, on no, your face is like, what are you game. talking about, Kyle? What, what's going on? What did you do? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, R- Ali Ali was the introduction to the studio for, uh, I feel like, mm-hmm. a lot of folks. And whether it was the first game or not, like, that's what really put eighth? rolls. Is yeah. it eighth? Yeah, eighth they game. had a bunch beforehand. Could we, could we run through their, their lineage before Ali Ali? Yeah. Do you have it yeah. up, Matt? Do you want to go for it? I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Windows only uh, 2009 or sorry, 2008 dead ends in 2009. They released Invaders Reloaded and Thinky Thunky Party. It's um, a great also, name. Yeah, just, also on Mac and Windows in 2010, Zombie Pop and Man Period Up um, in 2011, Focus Pocus uh, 2012 gets to the exit. And then Ollie Ollie was in, in 2013. 2013. Yeah. Which is that makes sense because it's their first console game. That's yep. why I mm-hmm. yep. got familiar with them with Ali Ali. That's fascinating. Wow. And, and published by Devolver. I did not yeah. realize that. Yeah, the, it was originally a Devolver joint. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um I forgot they also did Not a Hero. Not a Hero is great. Mm-hmm. That is fantastic, dude. That was one I think I got with my Nintendo it was on PS Switch. Plus. When I got my Switch and I just I never really dove into it. Yeah, it's a good time. It's just a, a 2D running gun. It's really great. Um, yeah, I, I always forget that they did like I you know, of course, like I feel like Roll Seven nowadays, at least for me personally, like they are not I don't mean for this to sound as a knock. They're they're the other skateboarding game. Like they're the mm-hmm. other company that does skateboarding correctly. Mm-hmm. Like right. no joke, I put Ali Ali one, Ali Ali two, and Ali Ali World as the third pillar, right next to Pro, Tony Hawk Pro Skater and the Skate series. Like yeah. I don't think I'm anybody thrasher. else has done it right. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 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 but even beyond that, like I totally forgot they did not a hero. I totally forgot they did laser league yeah exactly i yeah. was just gonna bring that up i totally forgot about that game and which like that the- had its moment like that mm-hmm. had like you know I, it was nominated for like dice awards and stuff like that i remember mm-hmm. that um and of course the the biggest and the latest being roller drum which by the way mm-hmm. wild that they launch ali ali world and roller drum in the same year i yeah for whatever reason i didn't realize that or i don't have that memory I, I i closed the page wasn't it months apart too uh, possibly. Let's see. I'll, I'll pull them up uh, right so now. I feel like Ali Ali World was. Oh, okay. So it was like so, half a year. Ali Ali World, February. Yep. And then Roller Drum, August. I had yep. Roller Drum in May for some reason, but it's still wild that they got both of them out in the same year, and they were both yeah. such high quality games. As bad as I was at Roller Drum, what a kick ass concept, man! That game is so cool. <laughs> and for fifty five employees as of twenty twenty three. Yeah, that's insane. That's nuts, man. What a talented yeah. goddamn studio. Um, Kyle, what's your history with Ali Ali? Uh, Vita. I got the first game on my Vita. And that's, that was my, that's why I asked you, my friend. <laughs> that was my go to. Like, I'm waiting at the car dealership for my car to be done, like oil change mm-hmm. or get fixed, whatever. And I'm sitting in the waiting room playing Ali Ali and getting not frustrated is not the right word but like <laughs> upset at myself because i'm the one screwing up the skating moves because yeah. it is such a complex system to learn because yeah i was just so used to tony hawk and right. um ollie ollie world having to use the thumbsticks to actually do the maneuvers because i'm not a big uh, a skate player I, I think i barely touched that game so that style of, of doing the tricks and whatnot it was new to me and i instantly fell in love with it because you are so you're like laser focused in mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah. F- and that was a game in the life cycle of me playing the Vita, which it's been maybe a year plus since I've touched it. That is, a, I would always boot it up and do another run here or there. Same thing with the second one. And then when world came out two years ago at this point. Yes. Like I adore world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the what they added to that formula with the the reverts and the verticality <laughs> in the levels and whatnot it's just like the depth of levels yeah oh my god they they just got it yeah um as a big skate player ea skate fan um like to the point where like 
by the time we got to skate two that as wild as this might say might sound um i like skate two securely planted my love for that game over tony hawk adore tony hawk tony hawk's incredible though especially the first four games underground amazing but um I love the thumbstick mechanic and the way that Roll 7 was able to adapt that into a 2D platformer formula, Mm -hmm. I felt was so brilliant because it so easily could have been botched. I don't understand like how it was executed so elegantly, if we could put it like that. Like it just felt impactful. It felt right. It felt smooth. Like everything, when you nail a trick with the sticks, it made sense. Like it triggered in your brain. Like, yes, I know I nailed that trick. I know I nailed the perfect landing. I know I nailed the perfect grind. And it's and, really hard to really execute feel in that way, especially in a 2d platformer that a 2d sports platformer. And mm-hmm. just to add that, like the perfect landing, perfect grind or whatever, when you have a perfect run, oh. one giant combo, nothing better feeling in the nothing world. better. Cause you earn that. Yeah, you dude. you earn that combo from start to finish on every single level because it is so knowing where the tricks are, where they're throwing obstacles in your way to kind of throw you off and just avoiding them perfectly and landing those perfect landings into into manuals and then grinds and it feel it feels so good. Yeah. To this day, um, like the the first game oh, still, still feels yeah. incredible. Oh, yeah. It's it's one of those games. It just comes down to game design and the talent of the studio. Like, you know, I I feel like there's a lot of times the the conversation of something feels dated comes up. Not, you know, sometimes we bring it up here, but like it's kind of rare in the indie space, I feel like. Um, But like that is a genuine conversation of like, you know, you go back to I think a great example is like now that Fallout is back in the zeitgeist, like people going back to Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas. And like there's like the critique of like, ah, well, it doesn't feel as good anymore. Just jump at the Fallout 4 or whatever it may be. Matt just for the sake of argument don't want to get into it <laughs> but i feel like because of how uh eloquent the design of ali ali is and just the snappiness the fluidity um that impact it's going to be one of those games that are timeless it's going to be again this might sound hyperbolic it is akin to like mario like mario feels timeless and that's because of the design aesthetic of that game um, and, and it takes a really profound and talented studio to nail something like that, that you could go back to in five, 10, 20 years and still feel that same sensation you did on launch day. Yeah. And it's, this is, um, of course, all the layoffs hurt, especially, um, the ones that do hit close to home. Like when, when it comes to like, we have friends or colleagues that, that we we know of that may have been impacted. Um, as a fan, this one really fucking hurts. Cause yeah, they're they're an all timer, man. It, it fucking it, sucks. Also, just to the genre of game it is. Yeah, we're, we're like the extreme sports game genre is slowly going away, and 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 having a studio that does it so right. Yeah, being shut down that is a huge hole in an already thinning genre. And, yeah. And, I I to to think that kids these days, man, I've just dated myself and feel so days. old. Kids these days <laughs> don't understand how good we had it back in the day with the Tony Hawks and the SSXs and the, oh, man. the, the aggressive the, inlines. We'll throw the yeah. thrashers in there, you know. Uh, the cool other borders. Same studio, man. Yeah. Same studio. Two, uh, <laughs> two extreme or three extreme, whatever that PS1 game was. And no, don't talk about those. Hey, <laughs> I, I had a great time. I didn't know any better. <laughs> the X Games game. Where you could play even, as a Cooper, even the Matt Cooper Hoffman Mini in three extreme. One? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they don't understand just how good we had it with the extreme you know sports genre and it's becoming like a white whale now when we get one we all flock to it and fingers crossed that it's good and yeah these guys did it extremely well and now who knows when the next one we get yeah i mean the only one i can think of on the horizon um is slope crashers which is carrying that spirit of of ssx and same thing Um, with them mm -hmm. and i'm blanking on the name i try to remember it before i brought up that point uh we just showed it off in the showcase the roguelite skateboarding game oh hellscape hellscape like there there are some but pure extreme sports like ali ali world and what roll seven did is uh i don't know diamond dozen yeah yeah um 
before we move on to the next game, um, I do want to shout out Ali Ali World uh, for Steam. It's currently eight dollars and fifty cents on Game Billet. So if you haven't played Ali Ali World and you have a PC, if you have a Steam Deck, it's verified on Steam Deck. Do yourselves a favor and, and grab it. I'm just to have it on Steam Deck. I might double dip on it just because mm. I I would like that game handheld. Um, yeah, do yourselves a favor, play those games. All three, all that. The Ali Ali, Ali trilogy is incredible. World is arguably probably the best one, yeah. uh, just because of that the extra maneuvering, the the extra depth, uh, a lot of the accessibility options that are in that game. Um, fantastic this, stuff. Uh, the this, personality also of that game. So yeah. that's I I, I do want to keep touching on like a little bit with Ali Ali. Um, one and two very similar games. Like two was very much just mm-hmm. an evolution of what one was doing. Still, two D pixel art platforming skating yep. just some extra moves extra flair extra um aesthetic um but world really like i remember the first time we saw world yeah i i feel like it was at like a, a nindies or like a nintendo indie world whatever it was, was at yeah. that point and they didn't show the name right away like it was one of those trailers mm-hmm. that like it, they kept it like guarded for a couple and i think we all were all on that live react um and we all had that same inkling of like is this ali ali but like no way in hell it could be ali ali because it looked so damn good and Mm -hmm. like it looked like such a significant step above what they did previously and when that name card dropped mind-blowing like we i i I personally could not believe that's something we got now i remember it's the same nintendo direct or the same indie direct we got oxen free too because i remember the Mm. thumbnail or Mm -hmm. the the episode title for that was ali ali oxen free Oh, nice. but that's why everybody had that fucking same yeah, idea yeah. for the name i remember that being like that week's like headline <laughs> right um yeah like uh, world is just it's in, again just the talent of that studio it's just incredible what they were able to do and i just also want to shout out if you want to hear us talk about ali ali worlds the moment we were playing it there is a video of review and progress yeah. one that we recorded of i got to play it early and 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 just gush about it in real time back then and so more yeah, of an in-depth Ali Ali World. There is a video on YouTube for you to check out. I, I think we were so in love with it. Um, it was the first time we did like a standalone review video. Yeah. That was like not part of an indie cast. Like that, that's what started us doing like the offshoot episodes mm-hmm. whenever there was like a game that we really loved under embargo. Yeah, just that's like, like the, the impact that this game had on us. Am I just gonna go play Ali Ali World tonight? Because I'm just remembering. Honestly, like all the- same. I'm hovering over at the car on game I it on PC. I know I have it on Switch. Like all the different <laughs> biomes and, and the different styles and the different skating gods that you were, yeah, man, going through. Dude, and, even and the, like, character the character creator. Yes, was so I was just good. gonna say that. <laughs> uh, I I loved how they uh, we mentioned it briefly. Like instead of the 2D plane being able to switch in the background and the foreground and, and find and the hidden paths. See, yeah. Oh my god. They was it's and like promoting. Um, different pathways for you to go through different yeah play, every single level you go like okay let Dude, me go that too, up like, and see what's going on instead of going down and sometimes there's yeah a middle. like it's like the simple not simple i don't mean to like boil any game that does this down to yeah. like simple but like it does checkboxing so well like it sets a goal structure that helps encourage the player to try new things to, to try different things yeah. to experiment like similar with kerbal that's like whenever a game has like a trophy system or an achievement system that support directly supports the gameplay like that's how you're supposed to treat those kind of ga- or treat those kind of systems like yeah. whenever like a platinum trophy encourages the player yep. to just go out of the box a little bit like Absolutely. ali ali world and the first two games but particularly world did it so damn well mm-hmm. matt you're looking for see if you own it on pc <laughs> i thought i thought i thought it was part of a humble choice one month and i thought i had it was i guess not. i remember yeah. Because, uh, again, that was a, a reason I almost joined Humble Choice. Yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> wild. Um, but, yeah, if you haven't owned it and you have a PC, like, please uh, game build it. it. Or if you go to um, Warrior64's Twitter, you mm-hmm. could find that direct link. Um, by the time you're listening to this, it's probably still on sale. Right. Uh, it, it's It had expansions. I mean, it's worth no? the $30, but, yeah, yeah, it did. I never played the expansion. I, I own it either. on PlayStation. Yeah. I never played it. But, yeah, I, I very much want to play this game handheld on deck um and of course the same year roller drum yeah tell me about it no no, yeah no sorry i just 
thinking back of how bad I was at that game because oh, I'm terrible at that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful at the game. I mean, if you're not familiar, it's a third person action shooter, but you are rollerblading and it's a weird reality game show thing where like you were I believe you're taking on robots as yeah. enemies. Um yeah. and you do tricks to refill your ammo and and um reload and whatnot and dodging and shooting at the same time and doing tricks like there's a lot going on but again they they take what they've learned from ali ali world and they put it in here and not being on a 2d plane either like it was full 3d moving around yeah. a giant map and hopping over gaps and again a lot going on real bad at this video game but it is stylish <laughs> as all hell yeah yeah for uh the first four way into uh 3d extreme sports man yeah. what a first entry like yeah this is the game we were referring to like it, it won baftas it like was critically acclaimed the whole nine yards but despite all that of course like there's that tweet going around from one of the bafta committee members and it's like again just utterly fucking heartbreaking um man roller drum is like similar to what we say about umarangi generation like Roller Drum is one of like the most punk rock games ever made. Like mm -hmm. it's just so gnarly. It, it like it is the definition of like a video game that shreds, you know. Um, and I love that they took a more fantastical route of like you were saying, like the reality TV show of like following this unnamed protagonist around who is just making his way through, making their way through this tournament and just trying to survive. Um, I was also awful at the game. I yeah. it takes a hefty amount of coordination. <laughs> um. That being said, though, when things click and again, it goes oh, yeah. back to the root of design ethics and just how you build the core theme of a video game. Um, man, when that shit clicks, it clicks. It, Funny it enough, feels phenomenal. This dystopian world in Rollerdrome takes place in 2030 or six years away from this future. Pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> and also like the fact that like... <clears throat> It's a rollerblading game. How Ooh. when did when was the last time we got Again, a rollerblading game? Yeah, it, it's 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 a lost art. Like Matt, if you are able to tell me something aside from aggressive <laughs> oh, inline well, right now, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean we we, we got one last Brink, year. That's what I'm thinking. But what did we get last before, year before uh, bomb rush cyberpunk. Oh oh, cyberpunk. oh sure oh. I sure that's fair. Um, I before, I mean I guess more grounded yeah. to some extent i know that's stretching it a little bit with roller drum but <laughs> um yeah before that yeah um definitely like aggressive inline or jet set radio future was the latest yeah man it's just like they're one of those studios that like after roller drum i was thinking like man what were they cooking what was, was next? like, man, when's the last time I watched Rollerball 2001? <gasps> Thank you for pointing that out. I was like trying to think of like, what was that? that? <laughs> I was trying to think, what was the name of that fucking movie? That's literally the plot of Roller Drum. <laughs> I, I've never seen the original, but yeah, I've seen that remake. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen it. I saw that shit in theaters. Yeah, same here. Is that, who was in that? It's like, it was like Courtney that? Cox or Nev Campbell's. I feel like one of the screen people. It's, uh, it. <laughs> it's the dude who plays the jock in American Pie. Um, okay yeah is it ll cool j yeah i was gonna Probably. say isn't it ll cool j in that movie? what's it called rollerball yeah. it's uh chris klein chris klein. Yeah, that's the guy. john reno <laughs> ll cool j rebecca <laughs> romain rebecca yeah. romain yeah wow. look at these outfits oh. what a what a movie <laughs> Now, th this was also back at the time with uh, uh tnn would have just roller derby on or Spike yeah. TV, mm -hmm. whatever it was prior. And I'd be, be being like, what is this? This looks freaking cool. And then it was followed up by like Slam Ball. Do you remember Slam Ball? Oh, Slam Ball. Goddamn right I do. Yeah. Um, also, um, Game Bell, uh, they also have the Rad Edition for twelve seventy seven. Oh, so, perfect. And that that gives you the, the expansions and stuff. Expansions, yeah. yep. So I'm buying yeah, that. Dude, oh, my God. Yep. Yeah, spend the extra $3. <laughs> like, come on. Or $4. I can't Four. math. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Man, a, a th what is it? A 3.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Yeah. <laughs> 2002, baby. All right, for a 2002 oh, film, uh, I'm, I'm going to read the plot synopsis, the one line that yeah. IMDb has. So 2002 film. 
the big thing in 2005 is a violent <laughs> sport, which can have some pretty serious consequences. Dot, 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 like dying. Whoa, <laughs> it's it's a it's a cheesy F the establishment movie. Like, yeah, well, listen, it did, it did the job, you know, yeah, whatever. Sure. Yeah, it got Mike in the <laughs> theater. <laughs> It's it got funny. my ass in the theater. Listen, this is around the time where I was I, I went to go see uh man, not the the motorbike version of Triple X. What was that called? Triple X of the state? No, no, no. But like it was a different <laughs> franchise, but I think it was sort of related to Triple X. But I thought Triple X had a motorbike. Didn't he jump yeah. a like, prison fence? Yeah, but like I think this studio saw that Triple X was doing that thing <laughs> and then they made a motorbike, motorbike version of it. Triple X. Man, I think Ice Cube was in it. I understand Ice Cube was in <laughs> that, Enemy, of Enemy of the State. I know, I know, but it's not. <laughs> I th- it's I not. I it's promise just, you. Is it not just the return of Xander Cage? No, it's a different. It's not Triple X. <laughs> 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 motorbike. Triple X. No, nope, don't do that. There's a, yeah, there's don't a do lot that, of yeah. adult films that pop yeah, up. Yeah, I just. Search. <laughs> we all made the same mistake. Whoops. Okay, cool. <laughs> Motorbike. Kyle, while I look this up, can you tell me what's happening this weekend, Indy? <laughs> sure. Uh, busy week, everybody. So strap in on Monday, May 6th. Torque. Six- Torque. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't realize that was a triple X movie. I thought that was a Fast and Furious movie. So I, I think it's like a it's a ripoff of triple X. Like, I, I think they try <laughs> their best to, like, associate it with triple X. So is it like Biker Boys or is that more like Fast and Furious? <sighs> I, I don't know. I don't think I, I've never seen Biker Boys. <laughs> I've never seen it. Holy shit, y'all. Huh? Tork is playing at the Alamo Draft House Raleigh on Wednesday, June twelfth, in thirty five right? mil. Holy you shit! You gotta go, right? <laughs> yep. You I gotta. mean, I might. <laughs> That's what are the fucking chances? Biker Boys next week after that. <laughs> I also Holy just would like to shit. know that uh, that is another uh, entry in favorite Mike moments of all time of him just yelling Tork into his mic. <laughs> <laughs> Torque. 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 motorbike movie. Ice Cube was in it. It's not a triple X movie. <laughs> oh. Anyways, it's a triple X motorbike movie. I need, uh, I need to dig into this triple triple X lore. Uh, sure. Please tell me what's happening. Monday, this weekend, May six, six one showcase alum plushy from the sky releases on PC. Yes. Play as a little angel who fell down from the sky and is finding her way home. Embark on a dreamy action adventure as you soar across the sky and explore the mystery of a fancy world. Fight your way through wacky and corrupted monsters with your close and far range combat abilities. The bosses will be challenging despite the charming part of the game. Players might fail during the initial attempts, learn their attack patterns, and find ways to overcome them. This game also focuses on a lot on real-time dodge, block, and parry abilities. There will be many scenarios that one will suit better than the others. I'm reading this from release.com, so it's not a Steam summary. So forgive me. Two things. I'm, I'm going to put the pause on you because, uh, A, uh, Torque and State of the Union, uh, not any of the state, State of the Union, not related. Uh, Ice Cube's character in Torque is Trey. In State of the Union, it's uh, Darius Stone. Uh, <laughs> secondly, I got so flustered by this torque stuff. I forgot that we have a couple uh, notes in the discord <laughs> regarding Ali Ali. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll, so we'll we're going to backtrack for a second. We're going to okay. backtrack for a second. Uh, I love doing this podcast. Uh, Nicholas Johnson uh, writes, thanks to Kyle raving about Ali Ali World. I gave the game a shot and fell in love between the gameplay, the aesthetic, the music and the vibes. This game give gave me the nostalgia and love I had for video games, especially skateboarding games. The studio did something amazing, and I'm hoping the teams get to show off at the next place. As a question for this, what studios would you like to see these teams go to create to go to and create another game? What kind of game would you want to see from them? Honestly, I kind of hope I kind of hope they try to reform and and just yeah. do more mm-hmm. extreme sports. Yep. It, it, That's, do the do the thing that I I've been screaming from the rooftops whenever I can is bring back the era of like EA big and just do do extreme sports well. And that's your bread and butter. And let's just keep eating with those kind of entries. Cause that's what I, that's what I miss so much. 
it's just that arcade style kind of racing on a snowboard or doing combos on a skateboard. And granted, we have the Tony Hawk remake, which is fantastic. Great. Yeah. Great Nothing stuff. against it. And we have we we have Ali Ali where like but extreme sports, man. And and that Ubi game I didn't really put a whole lot into, so I don't know if it's good or not. It, it was yeah, okay. The two of them. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah Riders okay. Republic, I think it was called. And uh, and Steep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So but that that there would was be also a dream. Um, they all come together and reform yeah ea big quote there, unquote. there was also um shredders which shredders didn't really hit for me too much yeah. either um honestly like the dream and like you know never say never who the fuck knows what the conversations are behind the scenes um i would love to see devolver go back to them and be like hey we'd love to make you an offer for whatever you have cooking because I, I mean, mm-hmm. clearly they they've been working on something for the past two years. So like, I would, in my heart of hearts, I would love to hear Devolver reach out to them and I would reform scoop that them connection. Both up and the intercept, you know. Sure. Yeah. I think I think um, Kerbal fits Devolver extremely well as two. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then Adam Gumby, Ali Ali, Ali Ali World made my shortlist for game of the year. The year came out. Such a fun, colorful, amazing game that always had me wanting the perfect one more level over and over. Very few skating games grip me like that one did. That's it. It was very approachable. Like there was nothing really very like it. So. Or there there is nothing really like it. I'm not trying yeah. to put it like past tense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, for those who feel the Fast and the Furious movies have only gotten better as they've gotten more and more ridiculous, take a look back at 2004 and see that Joseph Kahn and his team beat that franchise to the Nas injected punch. Kyle, continue <laughs> with the, this week in Indy. <laughs> what? <laughs> torque 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 um, tuesday gotcha. may 7th uh coming to pc <laughs> heading out uh heading out redefines the essence of journey over a destination and an immersive driving game deeply inspired by iconic road movies embark on an emotional voyage across american highways seeking escape and self-discovery your driver's fears dreams ambitions and choices shape each unique adventure blending races chases and encounters with vivid characters that's on tuesday the 7th and then buckle up everybody here comes may 9th get your wallets ready Set time aside. Wait, sorry. To oh, play never mind. These. What? What do you continue? It got pushed. It, it delayed. Ventures of the Vile got pushed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rainbow Cotton comes to PC, PS4, and Five, Switch, Xbox One, and Series X. Cotton, the iconic witch, makes a dazzling return. Now I'm reimagined in 3D. Experience the charm Ooh. of this once Japan exclusive cute 'em up classic. Now reconjured for a global audience. Nice. Uh, this one just on name alone. I, I have no idea if this is like a, a well known game, but it, it sounds cool. Brocula embark on an epic journey as Brocula, a vampire awoken from a 500 year slumber in a world unrecognizable to him. Stripped of his wealth, he must navigate the daunting maze of capitalism, taking on part time jobs <laughs> at the local garage, coffee shop, and restaurant to earn a meager living. But that's not all. His ancestral castle, now in ruins, poses another challenge work tirelessly to repair the dilapidated fortress all while facing the bureaucratic hurdles of reclaiming its ownership from the town's mayor pc xbox one and series x uh it's also uh part of the xbox uh sorry the idea at xbox developer acceleration program oh, that we sweet. talked about last year yeah very cool yeah i didn't hear about it i was like oh brocula absolutely let me see what this is all about sounds cool yeah. Also, on there's Thursday, a demo on Steam if you want to check it out. Very cool. Also, on Thursday, May 9th, the Vampire Survivors Operation Guns uh, expansion. DLC. Contra. Contra. Yeah, we could just, yeah, yeah, that's all I was going to do. Little Kitty Big City <laughs> also comes out on May 9th. Uh, pretty much everywhere PC, PS4, 5, Switch, Xbox consoles. Will you make your way home or will you explore what the big city has to offer first? I mean, getting home is obviously your main priority obviously well it's one of your priorities maybe more of a guideline it's definitely on your to-do list somewhere but first exploration you're a cat in a big city have fun indica have fun. oh wait but why nope, is that still it, that didn't get updated indica by the time you're listening to this is it's out. already out never mind uh also thursday may 9th crow country comes out on pc ps5 and xbox Ooh. series x 
Dive into a survival horror adventure characterized by a dense atmosphere, a palpable sense of location, a tight knit yet unforgettable group of characters, purposeful exploration, captivating puzzles, and above all, a mesmerizing fusion of tension and serenity. That is a long sentence. Say in 1990, (laughs) Edward Crow, the proprietor of Crow Country, a quaint theme park nestled in the rural fringes of Atlanta, Georgia, has vanished. His absence grew more mysterious after the sudden closure of his park two years prior the stillness is pierced when an enigmatic young woman mara forest embarks on a journey to the heart of the desolate amusement park driven to uncover his whereabouts Uh, i'm gonna stop stop. you there (laughs) why (laughs) it's just releases.com their descriptions are just like wild (laughs) we just no that was the end of it i was moving on okay i'm I'm sorry (laughs) Corporal well, Nation. I just got an email. Gets, May 9th. This is why the Indie Council is. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Mike. <laughs> Matt, what did you say? You email about what? I, 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 breaking news. I got an email. Something about May 9th. Yeah. Oh. Did um, you? Bloodstain uh, Ritual of Night uh, update 1.5 with um, cosmetic D- DLC packs. Uh, chaos mode and versus mode is dropping May 9th. Oh, okay. I think <laughs> it's what? May 9th. It's just, indie related. Just, it's like, <laughs> just like the, the like, I feel like we had like subtle disappointment <laughs> in our voices. I still want to like, play the game after, you know, sure. being so disappointed with the switch yeah, version, but yeah. <laughs> Corporate nation comes to consoles on May 9th. Uh, part Sick. of the six one showcase. I, you know, it. go watch the showcase. Uh, also May 9th, Thursday, Animal Well comes to PC, PS5, mm. and Switch. Is it coming to Switch? Is releases drunk? I did not know that. I thought it was okay. I could be wrong. Yeah, apparently, uh, hatch from your flower and spelunk through the beautiful and sometimes haunting world of Animal Well, a pixelated wonder rendered in intricate audio and visual detail. Encounter lively creatures, small and large, helpful and om- ominous as you discover unconventional upgrades and unravel the well's secrets. Very excited for Animal Well. And then mm-hmm. finally, yes. also May 9th, Crypt Master, which you've seen the showcase. <laughs> you know what it is. I won't get into the, the summary. Uh, not finally, though. Uh, also, Thousand Time Resist, which Matt played. Really yeah. liked it. Oh, okay. PC switch delve into a hyper cinematic adventure. You are a clone. You live at the world's end. You worship the last surviving human, the all mother. When a dangerous rumor shatters your faith, you phase through time and memory to expose a thousand year old lie. Relive, reclaim, resist. Dope fucking tagline. Holy shit. Yeah. I can't wait to play the full game. And then gift comes to switch PC, PlayStation five series X. When a protagonist, well, when the, nah, uh, just when the protagonist <laughs> <laughs> when the protagonist wakes up uh he finds himself on a luxury cruise ship the game revolves around the story of his attempts to escape from the sinking ship of and a group of passengers he feels nostalgic about i know becca is very much excited about this game as well and of course the pac-man game the pac-man battle royale but yeah we don't, the, we don't the indie title pac-man yeah yeah <laughs> Was, was that this week in indie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? I, I, I ended it, then you added to it. What do you want me to do? I didn't know if you wanted to shout out Conan Exiles or Gatekeeper or Cyber Manhunt 2 on the 10th. Wait, Jeez, wait, wait. Is it Cyber Man Hunt 2 or is it Cyber Man Hunt 2? <laughs> that one. New World. Coming to PC Early Access on May 10th. A narrative-driven puzzle <laughs> game that combines themes of big data, cybersecurity, and artificial intelligence. There you go. Sweet. Awesome. Hey, this has been episode 189 of the 61 Indicast. Thank you for listening. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, if you somehow like what we do, do us a huge favor. Uh, toss us a sub on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash 61 Indie. Drop a like on the video. Comment for the algorithm uh, on bell. Patreon. Ring that bell on Patreon. I forgot to mention, you can also join for free. We are publishing all of the content that drops publicly on all channels. We're dropping them on 
Patreon as well, just in case you want to get alerted for when a new review drops or a new video drops, anything like that. So you can join for free, hang out over there. And of course on the discord, hang out on the discord, six, one indie.com. You'll find that link. Matt, Kyle, Mike, torque it up. <laughs>